Greetings YouTubers! Welcome to the channel. Well, this is my 2002 Xterra 3.3. I did a lot of work to it, got it running pretty good, and uh, it runs great. Um, but I still have a small issue that I've been trying to tackle for about uh, a week or two, and it is a random 300 misfire code. I can feel it in the engine. Um, it hasn't really set to a particular uh, cylinder or anything, so it's random. And uh, I don't have my waveform machine right now. It got kind of, uh, it growed legs and it has not come back. And I don't think it's coming back, but that's another story. So I don't really have a waveform where I can actually do some testing. But I think the problem here is probably the fuel injectors because I replaced one in a far back in a video. And uh, it had no reading whatsoever on the ohms meter. And I actually tested a couple other ones up here. Uh, the readings were pretty high. But uh, they were just barely within spec. So I'm thinking, you know, uh, I might as well just go ahead and put the other five fuel injectors on. And here's what they look like. I picked up all these for about, I don't know, 60 bucks. I would have put them all on the first time, but I could not get some of these screws out. And I did not want to take a chance and break anything. As you can see, there's the fuel injectors right there the light set up right about there and these screws are really hard to get out sometimes so what i'm going to do is go ahead and pull this plenum back off and pull this rail off out where i can actually work on it and worst case scenario i may have to take a dremel tool or something and put some slots in them if i strip the screws out and get these out this is where the injectors actually go now the theory is on this side you can actually replace them without taking this uh fuel rail off if you can get these caps off down here but sometimes they get to be a problem but on this side you definitely got to take this uh plant them off and that's what we're doing right now so i decided to grab the old cell phone here the old s5 still rocking it the s5 active and uh i'm going to show you how to get this to plant them off pretty easy um get some bolts here we got to take off now i've got a whole tutorial on this on how to get these off uh you got to have some uh you got bolts like this camera to focus a little bit better there and you got to have a metric hex bit and I believe this is a six millimeter and that's what takes these bolts out and there are like five of these let's see one two three four let me just count this again one two three four and there's five of them take those out and you got some you know a few wires here to take off and a couple of hoses and your brake booster line and the throttle cable and it's pretty much ready to come out now the problem people get into right about here uh, i hold the light just right you can kind of see back on the back that little uh clamp i can get to that i loosen that up then there's a secondary hose that comes up it kind of goes straight up like this it's pretty stiff like this uh, i just usually just pull this plenum out of it and when i put the plenum back on i put some grease inside the hole and i'll show you here in a second then i just kind of push this plenum down it actually slides back in that hose then i take a pair of these and I go behind here and I loosen up that clamp and I pull it up and if I climb up here let me see if I can climb up here real quick all right uh I don't know how well you can see this but there's a clamp kind of hung up right here I lifted it up and if I take my finger here see it right here I kind of move it around I slide this up where it kind of bends right here that'll stay there and you can just pull this tube out of this hose um, I'll get into this a little bit more and now we're ready to pull this up out of here and when you lift it up there's a couple of wires under here. You can disconnect. One's right there. And one's right there. And this whole plenum will come out. And we can get into our fuel rail and change out our fuel injector. So uh, let me set the camera down here. We'll pull this out of here real quick. All right. So I'm going to try and grab this and pull it out of here like this. You can kind of watch me. It's pretty easy to get out once you get the hose off the back. So I just about got it there. All right, it looks like that's off. In the back, the hose is off. All right, so now we're ready to lift straight up on it like this, and it comes right out. So that is out there. So there are the two hoses I was talking about. This one here I had to cut in an earlier video, but I got another one and just snaked it. And I find if you put a little bit of oil in these, and, and, and inside of this one here 
right here around this guy and actually it's back here. let's see where, where am i i'm a little lost here actually it's this one right here this is the one that comes straight up you slide this down over and it makes it a lot easier to connect those uh, when you put it back on and you uh tighten these clamps up the best you can and actually i lost my little c clamp that goes on that one let me see if i can fish it out of there and here comes our little clamp that i dropped and basically I just take, let's see if I can show you here the best way. Uh, I just take something like this, and I stick behind there, and I grab it like this, and I release it. I slide it down. You could actually probably slide this down on the hose, and it'll probably stay there. If you pull it up, it's probably just going to come up and kind of rattle around. And once it comes up, sometimes I can pull it up to there but it's got a chance to fall back down when you unhook this hose so uh, I would just probably if you can just slide it down on that hose and that's basically how this comes off but go back to some other Nissan videos and you'll see all about that all right so we're down to the goodies here and there's the injectors here's the one I replaced I don't know if you can see it. it's nice and pink this one was giving me a problem. This one over here, uh, the reading was really high, so I tried to replace, I believe it was this one here. And if you look, I actually tried to replace a couple of them. If you look here, you see I can't, I could not get these screws out. There's actually one right there. See the threads on it, on the top of it there? This is why we're just gonna pull the whole rail out and just change the injectors and put it back in. So actually taking this uh, intake off, Took me about 10 minutes, so it wasn't that big of a deal. The only thing you're going to really struggle with are these hoses. And also, one other note, make sure when you put it back together, it's this, hose, this clip here, or this, no, this clip here, make sure you push this way on the sensor, which is right here. Because if you don't get this all the way on, your vehicle is going to idle really, really high, and you're going to get an IAC code for your air control idle system right here uh iac so i made that mistake once and i had to take it back apart just to plug the wire in this one here it snaps in really really easy but this one here just verify you got on it really far and it clicks so just so you know all right enough about that so uh i think what we'll go ahead and do is take this rail out real simple to do i just unhook this hose here and it's held in by six bolts one there uh let's see actually i think it's only four one there yeah, it's four, I believe, and that's it, and then this pulls out and unhook those wires. So we'll get this out of here, and we'll look at it. And, and the other reason is I think uh, these are probably uh, fuel injectors that are causing the problem for the PO300 uh, uh, random miscode that I'm getting. It's because when I first started up, I smell raw gas. So I think one of them's probably sticking open. All right, let's go ahead and get this off. All right, so we're on our last bolt here. See if I can get this out with one hand without dropping it. Probably not. Nope. Grab my magnet. Fish everything out. There's that. And there's that. So we'll put these off to the side. By the way, these are the same size. These are six millimeter too. Uh, same size for the intake bolt. Now all we gotta do is lift this up out of here and hook these two hoses here and it should come right up. I'll probably set the camera down because it's sitting on these little rubber feet. All right, there it is. Let's see if I can get it out of one hand and camera on the other. All right, there. There it is. So I'll take it out here in the light. Kind of a cloudy gray day, but it's not cold, which is good. So here's the one I replaced in the far back. And uh, the other ones, they uh, look like they're, they're original, but um, let's see. You can't really tell. Although this one here has got a lot of dirt there. I don't know if you can see that. Inside of that's pretty dirty. So, and these are fairly clean. So I, I have probably just one of them somewhere because now and then I'll hear a dead miss. But it's so intermittent, it's really hard to find out. And here I just cut this off and I put my own line on it from earlier because I had a problem with this leaking out here where it connects uh, together. 
with the fitting, so I just put my own hose there. This is the return line, so um, go ahead and get these off. Now, see, with this off like this, if you have a problem with these screws, you can come up with some ideas how to get it off. There's several ways to get these screws off, but sometimes you can just put just a little bit of heat on it. But you got to be careful because if you can't get it off, then you're going to have to reuse your injector and you might damage it. So go ahead and put these new ones in. I'll do the best I can. All right, desperate measure sometimes uh, equals desperate actions, I guess. But uh, I had to do a Dremel tool here, and uh, it worked. Looks like I had to cut a couple slots in here. Now, you're not going to be able to take a big screwdriver. What you're going to have to do is probably use something like this and kind of push down on that as you're turning it so it doesn't slip out. And I want to try to do this with one hand here and see if this is going to work. All right. Uh, oh boy, that's in there tight. There's little screws. I'll tell you, you wouldn't think they'd be that tight. Let's try it again. Oh, all right, we got it. All right, so let's try the other one here. And all I did was cut a couple slices in there. Jesus. I don't know what they. I soaked them with oil, penetrating oil, and. I don't see any corrosion, so I was trying again here. Let me think mentally here. Get all my mental powers here going through my body. Oh, gee. All right, so we got the last two out. I'm really happy about that. Now, the other ones came out okay, which is kind of weird. So I don't have two screws to replace these with, but that's okay. We're going to put these out here where it's easy to get to when it's all back together, and I'll find me a couple screws later put it back together and this is a good injector I left on here because it's good got some tape around it and uh, forget about just taking a pair of pliers and trying to screw these injectors out what I did was flip it upside down like this and used something like this and tapped them out like that just kind of tap on them and it'll knock them out if they're good you want to save them you can try it but I actually got most of them out that way they just popped right out so all really I have to do now is uh, take these two injectors here out the rest of the way and go ahead and put the other four in so that's how I got these off so uh, You can see the uh, Kind of just got a slice in it there's my Dremel tool. So All right, so I'll go ahead and put these new injectors in. I'll clean everything out a little bit here There is a rubber seal in here by the way. I don't know if you can see that right there There's a little seal Take some emery cloth and just kind of clean this up a little bit so that don't tear that seal at least it feels like a seal of sea. Well, something there. Could be just a lip, but it, nevertheless, uh, just clean that out really good, and you should be uh, ready to put it all back together. All right, a quick tip here, and I apologize for the birds out here. They're going nuts. It's spring. Make sure you put some oil on that, and make sure you get that little seal on there, on the bottom there, because they don't give you the seal when you buy the new ones. And this, uh, lip there that where it's kind of sliced in it actually goes down like that so stick that on there like that i'm trying to do this with one hand and the camera now i got the rest of them on there they went in pretty good although i tried to do one of them without spraying any wd-40 on it some oil and it was kind of difficult to get down in there and you got to be careful you'll tear that seal on the top there so let's go ahead and push this down like that seal still on there Spin it a little bit, push down on it, and there it is. All right, so all six of them were on. And also, the one I took off here, this is the one that was going like to 1900, I believe, on the ohms meter. And they should be from 9 to about 14, so I think this one was causing the problem. And you can see it's uh, kind of dirty. Maybe I can stick the ohms meter on it real quick for you guys. As you can see there, this thing is way out of spec. We're going 21 ohms, so I'm hoping this is the injector that's causing the uh, misfire. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and get this on. All right, there's our last bolt, and it's in. And uh, you gotta make sure all your seals go in right underneath your plenum there for the uh, injectors, but you can see they're all on. And now all I have to do is go ahead and bolt the intake up. 
Put a grease head up there, put some grease in that uh, tube there, that heater hose now in there, and it makes those hoses slide on and uh, a little bit easier. And we're ready to go ahead and put this back together. So I hope these injectors actually make it run a lot better, but we'll see. Okay, so we've got the injectors back on, the whole uh, rail assembly, no problem. Now I'm getting ready to put back on the uh, intake. Now what I do, this little clamp here I was talking about earlier, Get your little piece of tape and just kind of leave it up on this piece here because what we're going to do, you got this hose here. Don't worry about this one. This is just a breather hose that goes on the top. You can get to it easy. I put a little grease on this right here. This will allow those tubes to slide down into that one. And you can slide that one really easy on. And you notice I've got my clamp on that one there. And the reason we did that, we had to put a clamp right there on this big one. But it's really hard to get on there. You could probably slide it down. It doesn't open up far enough for me to slide down here, and I'm fighting with it, so it's really just a lot easier just to put that clamp here. Then when you get ready to push it back down, you can move that tape or whatever and pull this down like this and clip it on the hose, and I am going to be using something like this to do that with. So that's one way you can do that. It does save a little bit of hassle, so I'm going to get this on. Oh, and one other important thing. Do yourself a favor. Go ahead and put this plug wire on back here because it is hard to get to. This will make your life a lot easier. Just kind of make sure it's on right there. Leave it hanging there. And also you got this little itty bitty line. You can kind of pull this back on uh, when you get to implant them back on. This is the uh, fuel regulator hose. And now we're ready to go ahead and put this uh, intake on. All right, so that is tight. That one's pretty easy to get to that clamp right there. And now the clamp back here, uh, it's on, trust me. Uh, I think you can kind of see, see that clamp right there on the left? You can kind of see the ears. Uh, I just slid it down on there and we're good to go. And don't put your gasket on yet because uh, you still got to hook a couple wires up here. Then we can go ahead and lower this down because you don't want to tear your in, uh, intake gasket up because you can still lift this up now. And we can hook up a couple wires. And then we put our gasket on and go ahead and button this up. So this is how I put the intake on on this uh, Nissan. I know a lot of people struggle with this, but once you get it off, just do what I did, grease it up a little bit and take your time and put the clamps back on and you're good to go. All right, so I'm not gonna bore you with any more of this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of it together here. It's pretty simple to do and we'll start this up and see how she sounds. All right, guys, good news. She's sounding amazing. I just got her running here for about 20 minutes and uh, started right up. I had a little problems to begin with. I did get number five injector pushed all the way down there. You really got to push those injector clips way in there, but man, what a difference. It's smooth. You can hear it there. No more of that poof, poof, poof now and then from the tailpipe. We're going to take it out on the road here. It's dark out, but I don't know if you can see anything or even hear anything, but you can hear the exhaust. A nice rumble and uh, all the gauges are good and I got my ODBD2 code reader there we're gonna take it out in the road and uh, we'll check it one more time before we wrap the video up so the problem was the injector and uh, turned out one of these was bad so uh, so we just replaced all six of them so there you go you need to do that to a Nissan Xterra if you want to restore it and uh, you rebuild one that's one way you can do it. All right, let's take it out the road, get some gas, and wrap this video up. All right, guys, uh, I guess we can wrap this video up. Uh, no more uh, misfiring. It's really smooth, although the brake light's on because I, I need a little brake fluid in the uh, reservoir out there. But, man, I can't believe what a difference those uh, injectors has made. It's a rainy night out here. But go back here at the exhaust. You can listen to it, and you can hear it, and it sounds really good no more of that puffing backfiring not backfiring but that suction sound when you get a miss but it's uh nice and smooth so i'm happy with it so thanks for sticking through the video with me guys maybe if you have this problem you might want to go ahead and check out your injectors and make sure that they're okay do a test like i just did do an ohms beater test and that one was way high and that's the one that was causing the problem so if you like this video guys give it a thumbs up 
on this rainy night in the Appalachian Mountains. And until my next video, guys, I'll see you later.